The pressure-containing parts of a Viking internal gear pump are critical for proper pump operation. Let's take a closer look at the external components of a Viking pump. This is the pump report. The external, pressure-containing parts of a Viking pump typically include the pump casing, head, and bracket. Though not covered in this video, the external parts of the relief valve are also considered pressure-containing parts. While pump designs may vary, the pump casing will always house the moving elements of the pump. The rotor and idler run in close clearance to the casing to prevent the slip of liquid internally. The casing is the part of the pump that connects it to the greater system via the suction and discharge ports. The pump head mounts to the casing of the pump. A key feature of the pump head is the crescent. Both the idler and rotor gears run in close clearance to the crescent, creating a seal for liquid in the gear cavities and preventing liquid from slipping from the discharge back to the suction port. In addition to the crescent, the head features a replaceable idler pin, which supports the idler gear. In some pump models, the casing is footed or flanged for mounting. Others require a footed bracket. The bracket contains a bushing, which supports the rotor shaft assembly. The bracket also features a catch basin for capturing liquid in the event of seal leakage, allows the casing to be rotated for multiple piping options, and houses the thrust bearing, which provides a secondary point of shaft support. Even though the parts may look different from pump to pump, the external components of a Viking pump all serve similar purposes. Besides the moving and pressure-containing parts, Viking internal gear pumps have a number of supplemental components. Let's take a closer look at the anatomy of a Viking pump. This is the pump report. The supplemental components of a Viking pump include the thrust bearing assembly, relief valve, and seal. These components work in coordination with both the internal and external parts of the pump. The thrust bearing assembly includes the bearing and the surrounding housing. The housing is much larger than the bearing itself in order to facilitate seal removal. The bearing is located inside the housing and features lip seals on either side to retain grease lubricant. The bearing and lip seals can be replaced by removing the threaded bearing housing end cap. A lock nut keeps the bearing housing locked to the rotor shaft assembly to maintain axial position. The threaded housing makes adjusting internal clearances possible. Clearance is held by tightening two set screws on the bearing housing face. All positive displacement pumps require some form of overpressure protection. For many Viking pumps, this takes the form of an internal relief valve. These are spring and poppet style valves. If pressure builds too high, the spring compresses and allows liquid to flow back to the suction side of the pump. To work properly, the relief valve must be oriented correctly. The adjusting screw cap should always face the suction side of the pump. Finally, there's the shaft seal. The design and location in the bracket may vary, but the purpose remains the same, to keep liquid contained within the pump. For Viking pumps, only one seal is required to seal between the stuffing box in the bracket and the rotating shaft. There are many different seal types, from packing to a sealless mag drive. For an internal gear pump to run safely and efficiently, these supplemental components need to be properly set and match the application. To learn more about the anatomy of a Viking pump or to see other pump reports, please visit our website at vikingpump.com.